Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain how you can enable uh, dynamic client registration in any pan platform using Azure AD. Right. So in my case, I have Azure AD as a OAuth provider, and uh, the client registration happens manually. The we, as a mule sub team, we raise a request to the Azure AD team. They do it manually, and it was a time taking process. So. I wanted to avoid this manual thing and wanted to have this dynamic client registration happens when I want the uh, uh, application registered in Azure AD and the same client ID and secret used in uh, any pine platform natively. So I followed this uh, article and the video, but I was uh, not able to succeed. Uh, so made few changes uh, the, uh, with the code they have uh, provided in this video. Um, that I will go through in detail. One main problem was that uh, I was not able to create applications using the graph API provided by Azure AD. It was time taking process. Uh, in here it was three seconds it was taking but the timeout given uh, in the AnyPine platform was five seconds. Within five seconds if the client registration is not successful uh, then I was getting 502, so I was not successful. So then I talked to um, Mule Sub support team. They said we can increase the timeout, but uh, that's that is only for the uh, corporate account. So for this demo, I have used a trial account, which is not possible. So um, only creation of this application I have uh, not done. Instead, I have created that separately and fetched the app. And after that, I need to set application URI and the password. Uh, th there are three API calls I'm doing it, which we will go it, go in detail in the in the further in, in uh, further uh, session during the further session. So, so I'm planning to follow this agenda. Introduction, uh, set up overview in any point uh, platform and the demo how you can generate a token and how you will call the actual API using the same client ID and Azure given client ID and secret a code walkthrough and the postman and the independent studio as well so in the introduction I have a flow diagram for you so this is the existing authentication method where using the manual process we will get the client ID and uh, secret from Azure AD this is to create a JWG token, then we will also get the Azure platform any client ID and secret, which is separate from Azure ID, uh, in order to identify whether this consumer has access to the, the right API. So we will pass both the client IDs uh, and secrets while calling the actual API. So once it reaches the AnyPen platform or uh, the um, runtime, it actually does the valid JWG validation. Then once the JWT validation is successful, we'll, the client ID enforcement will be applied in order to, if we have access, the consumer have access, then he will get a response back. So this is the manual process which we are we wanted to avoid. So the step number one will happen dynamically within any pine platform. So usually when we create, while we create a client ID and secret in any point uh, platform through in the exchange this way. So this is the only process we are going to follow in order to have Azure ready uh, client ID and secret uh, that will be stored in any pen platform and that will be treated as a native any pen platform secret uh, client ID and secret. So this demo we will have later but uh, while we have created the client ID and secret that uh, any pen platform uh, goes to Azure ready and creates uh, get uh, creates application there and gets the client client ID and client secret uh, there. So we call it as combined client credentials because Azure AD's client ID and secret is, is being stored in any pen platform and treated as a native client ID and secret of any pen platform. So using that, you can, um, since it's given by Azure AD, you can generate the token. Also, you are going to pass the client ID and secret combined one uh, to any pen platform, which will uh, which it understands the client ID and secret. Then it um, determines whether you have access or not. Then based on it, you whether you will get a API response or access denied uh, response. Yeah. So we are clear in the, with the introduction and uh, set up overview in order to do the uh, in order to enable the client ID and secret uh, sorry uh, dynamic client registration go to any pen platform 
and uh, access management so the, the difference between azure ready and uh, other providers like okta they are providing fully uh, enabled dynamic client registration but azure ready does not provide a dynamic client re registration url we are going to uh, fill the gap by developing this custom code and deploy it in the cloud op so so first enable this one uh, in the client providers so first thing is you need to create a client uh, add client provider and then open id connect dynamic client registration which i have done it already which will open this way name and description uh, as per your wish then uh, the issuer where you can find out from here go to the open id configuration so issuer, then you will get this url but this url didn't work like the way it has so i removed this v2 uh, v2.0 uh, from the url then then it started working so let me close this one Yeah, here you go. So that issuer is coming from there, and uh, register is a custom implementation code which I have developed here. It, it is a normal uh, MuleSoft API de deployed in Cloud Up. That URL as I have given here, register. Then the client ID and secret of any app of Azure AD. You need to create an application in Azure AD and give it here. So in my case, I have given directory app registration so here I have a mule soft uh, for mule soft I have given the application ID and the client I, I have added a secret one of the secrets should be this one it's it's filled here and this URLs are coming straight from this one any pen platform authorize and token you need to copy this words 2.2 authorization endpoint and the token endpoint so this is visible here and the introspect which is a custom implement code which I will show you what read later so this is then step number one and uh, after that, once client ID, uh, client provider is added, then you to go and assign to some environment, which I have done for the sandbox. Here you go, the sandbox environment I have assigned. After that, you are free to go and create a uh, request access. But if you do that, you will not be seeing. So for the sandbox, I have enabled it. Let me log in again. Okay, so request access. Go to the perfect environment and uh, take the create new application. So let me retry that again. So, if you do the first two steps and if you come to this page, you will not be seeing this implement grants and all being added. So, in order to enable that one, you need to go to this um, API manager and, and put client ID and secret uh, policy, uh, client ID enforcement policy, then you will be seeing this one similar to this one. So, that is a one cache. Let me go through. Uh, the number of APIs I have. So I have one API, which is uh, sample, and the implementation looks similar to this one. So in the runtime manager, I have two applications. One is for, one is the custom uh, code required to enable dynamic client registration, which is this one, and another is a sample app. So this is a custom uh, code create dynamic client registration actually this api calls these graph apis given by microsoft in order to access the azure ready thing right if you if you want to create an application you can 
go and create an application as per this one your application you should have this one right so for client so what I have done I have tried with client uh, create application then get up get applications so I, I, will, I can show you that uh, in detail but you can see this page refer this page if required so the introduction part and setup overview is done I've shown you the this page and uh, access management page and how you will request the application here now we are gonna see a demo right uh, which is an important thing so when you have two set of client ID and secret from Azure ID and any platform generally you will create a token and pass uh, both the IDs then you will get access now we are going to request one token so here if you want to create an application right this way you need to pass to this graph graph API application one uh, six one eight six you notice I'm going to create this API first here then um, create it here usually it will not happen this way so the create application also happens here Create it. So this way, even this time, it it got timed out because it took lots of uh, time to create or uh, the fetch application itself. So now I'm going to retry it again. Otherwise, I have to redo this video. Yeah, this time was successful um, but actually we can increase the timeout by talking to the support team so you will not have any issues in real time so I'm going to request uh, access let me fetch the client ID and secret uh, in the Azure itself Azure so that uh, we can compare both this client ID and secrets are same so go to all applications regular okay, regular 186 through that API and uh, through our code mules of API code I have added a client ID and secret then this application URI which is important to us so all successful now we are going to compare this client ID and secret which was added so 186 going to here so the application uh, client ID is this one I've copied it 9 C F yeah which is this one and uh, the client secret which one was created is Z R O so is it R O was added yeah so now I'm going back and using this credentials, I'm going to try try accessing this one. So before that, uh, I forgot one thing. So I'll go to API Manager. I'll show you how many um, policies been added to this one. So policies. Here I have JWT policy. Edit. So uh, this is as usual and uh, we have a detailed video about this enabling uh, Azure ADS worth provider in uh, the channel. So okay. yeah this is Azure AD yeah Azure ADS worth provider. So this details out. So I'm coming back and uh, filling this form it's very usual and uh, let me cancel this guy 
and client ID enforcement, which is very, very default thing. So both are enabled, and uh, we forgot to see one thing in the client uh, edit. Yeah, I've skipped the client validation uh, here for now. Let, let's try with this one. Later, I'll show you how we can enable and validate it. However, uh, I'm have currently I'm having Azure AD tokens stored in any point platform, which is this one. So using that, I'm going to show you how you can access this uh, actual API. And this my actual API can be applied, can be accessed this way. So token, this token generation is quite different from the normal one, where you need to pass. So 186, I have uh, got the client and secret. In the overview, we have created this uh, as well. Programmatically, I am uh, adding this. The expose an API. So this was being added programmatically from the Ulsoft API. So now I need to replace this with this here while accessing this APIs. API while generating the token. Okay, this token is generated going back and uh, accessing this replacing this token and the client ID and secret which we have to replace in the headers the same way 186 and the client ID and secret Copy this client ID. Go back to this. Ah. Copy it. Copy it. Secret. Now we are good to go. Here I am. Uh, in this API, I'm just printing all the attributes. That's it. So I'm able to access this API. If you don't pass this scope, let's check whether it works. Yeah, the scope is not mandatory here, uh, but the client ID and secrets. So the client ID and secret are uh, this is we are stopped by this client ID enforcement, and if we you don't give in the token or you give a malform token then you will be stopped by the JWT itself so it says invalid token so we are good so now you know from here how can the only step what you're doing is request the client registration from your AnyPoint platform which actually um, creates the client agent secrets in any point uh, sorry the Azure AD then gets the client ID and secret, stores them and treats them as a native uh, client ID and secret of any platform. So now I'm able to access that. So we are very good until this point. So go back to the this one. So generate token, calling actual APIs, everything is done. So now I'm going to walk through you uh, the num number of APIs I'm using. So if you want to create uh, so these APIs I'm using, graph APIs, one is create application, one is adding the password to it, uh, adding, so, sorry, going back. So in order, in order to do this one, you need to generate the token by using the app one, given client ID and credentials, is the only app created by us uh, initially. Uh, in the Azure AD, so that client, so you can generate the token by giving this default scope. Then, this is the application, and I'm giving the body as this one. There is no, there are no headers. I'm passing, so only the token. So you can create the application here and add a password. So you can refer the uh, refer this page. This is for add password. 
where you can see his um, application so inside the application certificates and trades add password refer this page very so that you can you need to pass the token as usual and the body the body should have uh, this this one password credential this brand name and uh, this is the application name which you get it from the first page for application create will return the application ID this ID should be uh, in the URL then you can add a password to that and uh, you can add a resource UI which I'm referring this API add key So another API, and I think that's not the API actually. So you need to add identifier URI. If you trigger this one on the patch one, you will get in the Azure portal. You have you will set this application ID URI. So that is important. That is the one you will add while calling the API scope here. Sorry, the headers. You will add, uh, sorry, the, while generating the token, the token generation here is different because we are adding the this, this URI is basically to identify um, the API globally. So this should be unique. That is why it has it's having the application registration name. But when, when you do it in the, for example, I'm deleting this API, this URL. By default, it will be there will be some GUID will be said. But since I'm doing it from my, my code, I'm I've set this application ID itself because it's it's which is unique and uh, I don't need a quid to understand this one. So this is done. Then the code walkthrough. What we have is first we will see it in the Postman Azure ADI page, which we are doing it now. So we have seen most of the APIs, and I will show you in the code itself. So this custom implementation is deployed here. Yeah, this API is the one having hosting this code this code receives it uh, let me go and show you the logs i have uh, logged how we are getting the create application request from azure uh, from any pen platform and how we are returning the value to them so, uh, so this is how we get it from azure ready from from any pen platform to Azure ready then what this is what we return to the any pen platform this is all um, as per open id standard so and that the same as explained and this code i'm going to put it in my github and put the url in the description so that you can access it this is quite this is a modified code of uh, virtual mulis so here they have this is the entry point where it will route our pages and here most of them are uh, not having anything but uh, what we need is post register application this one receives the this receives it uh, from the any point platform and uh, calls this api as this flow basically i have done it through fetch because the create was taking too much time and it was totally timing out i was not successful even um, if the create is successful uh, so this is because of the limitation that the timeout is five uh, seconds as a default but this can be extended uh, if you call um, you'll sub support so first is i'm getting the token from azure ready uh, then this is a fetch api so let me show you that uh, url so this URL, if 
for the page application filter i'm doing that so i'm, I'm just fetching it i'm not creating this one but if you extend the time out you can make create works uh, one so create or fetch depends on uh, whether you are corporate or in a free network if you're trying it with the free free accounts with any platform then go for fetch otherwise it will time out so this transform message this is to just set the identifier URI. once we fetch the application or create the application we get the identifier of application then we pass them you pass this payload in order to set this identify URIs uh, I'll go to any uh, portal so we are basically setting this URL. So this is nothing but the client name which we provided from any, in any point platform. Uh, in our case, it's regular 186. So which is so that is done. So I call this API uh, graph API. So go back to this API I'm calling patch. So this is the patch one. I'm calling this API. And uh, updating this, that uh, as it is identifier URI. Then next one is set the password. You can set the password by this one by passing this payload to this URL. So that that one is this one. So add password, and this is the. I, I will give you this um, post and URL as well. Upload it into the GitHub so you can access it. So once that is done, we have set we have set the password. Now, uh, by setting this password, you will get a client secret as well. So, so this is the client secret we are aiming to get. So once I have this client ID and secret, the client ID I'll get one uh, as as part of the fetch or create. Now, I will get the client secret. I'm going to pass them back to any point platform in this format. So this format is uh, Open ID standard format. We are only feeding the re regular one, so I'm hard coding few details. Um, you can take this as a starting point and do it. This client name, which was provided from the Anypen platform, and this response value is coming from the previous uh, calls. Yeah, others are remaining same. Then and that's it. So we we have, if you remember, in the access management. Let me go back to the access management. We have provided um, available uh, token and uh, validate URLs from a, a, any pen uh, from Azure ready. Go to client providers. So here, this issuer is coming from Azure Redirect, Direct, and this this uh, this one is coming from us. So this authorization and token is coming from yeah from Azure AD directly, and this introspect is again coming from this Cloud of API. So go back to this one. For introspect, there is nothing special. We are returning a hard code value introspect. Or a, or a constant value for introspect uh, so we always send this one it has no value uh, I hope but I have replaced few of them uh, by by seeing the token decoder so, so the token generated in the postman I have taken it Probably this token copied it, but I I've seen it has no value, so you can just leave it and run your thing. If it, if that is not working, then only do this one: the decode D64 or uh, JWD.IO. So that's the token. Now oh, here, so these values I have replaced it in. I don't know if that matches now. I don't know. Did I have just replaced whatever I know? Otherwise, uh, you can leave it as it is. Or 
are you I think this is not coming from here none of them are AUD so again so here I'm taking yes There's another URI. That's fine, we can leave as it is. That's fine. So, this introspect has no meaning, we can leave as it is. And uh, others are, uh, I don't know whether it's been used, so I have not touched this one from uh, Virtual Muley Score. I have left it as it is. Only thing what I have, what is different is I have added this additional thing called application URI and uh, I think this this was there. So only only thing I have added is application URI. So now uh, we are able to access this actual API. Yeah, I see this one. I have I've removed it from there. That then it stopped working. So now we have to go back to this um, Azure portal. Find the application name regular 186. Oh, this is from different people. So here I am in my account. Go to uh, app registrations, then this one now I'm going to set expose an API set the URI not this one but this one now I have set this one coming back and triggering this API See? Let us try the new one. Uh, I don't know for some reason it didn't work. This is on regular 186 exposed in API. It works so um, it works it took some time and now I'm going to copy this uh, token and um, going to AP token and the actual call so I'm going to pass this one 
let me remove this scope. Okay, it's fine. It was enabled. Pass this token. So okay. This this is a get request. This is not no more uh, none. I'll pass it. Yeah, it works. So I have gone through go through this one. So this this one I will add it. These are the um, resource path to set uh, resource URI. And so in the real world, you will be not using you will be deploying this uh, implementation. You will not be having this fetch API, but the create API. This create API was taking more than four seconds. I have kept it as fetch account. Otherwise, it, otherwise it would have been worked. So in order to achieve that, you need to talk to this uh, MuleSub support team to increase the timeout. Once you configure this one, they will be able to do it. Once you configure this, uh, this dynamic client registration they can they will be able to increase the timeout for this one for example 15 seconds um, when you create a, a token when you create an application in here this uh, request access create new application this shows the page when you request it this information in the Sorry, in this format, is sent to our uh, MuleSoft API. MuleSoft API, based on this client name, it actually requests to create application in Azure AD, and then it sets the resource URI, then it sets up the password, then it sends the client ID and secret in this format to any point platform. Right, so that is done. What is that is done? The same, the fetched client ID and secret is treated as a native client ID and secret. Then, no more. You will have two set of uh, client ID and secrets. The only one can be accessed, and your API is more secure. Hope that helps. I did not miss anything. Uh, I'm going to share this um, code. Let's check the this one. Did, did we miss anything? So the introduction I have shown you. That is one. So set up overview in any point platform, Postman, and how I have shown you how the request is being shared from. So once you receive the request in this format, uh, so many now. your uh, transform component for creating an application will be looking like this so we request it the original plane node the client name will be given based on the client name we create an application as you're ready by calling this API then we set the trans application URI then we create a password to that then then we return it so First, I I, rec I, rec I mean I recommend to go through the virtual mulius with the uh, uh, video, though it has uh, less resolution, so you cannot view the screen. But understand the concept. Come back here and see what was missed there. And uh, also, I recommend you to go through the uh, Azure AD uh, set up in the in the url I, i'll give you that also in the description so it will be comprehensive and uh, you'll be able to set up this dynamic client registration in any point platform thank you very much